Hi, I'm Dr. Colin Kingston. I'm excited tonight to talk to you about the MAKO. The MAKO was introduced to us in 2020 and I now have over three years experience with the MAKO. I have had the pleasure of using this uh, device now over a thousand times in a thousand different cases um, to include partial knee replacements, total hip replacements, and total knee replacements. Currently, I'm the only orthopedic surgeon in the region that does MAKO total hip replacements. The, that region defined from the New Kent area, West Point area, Middle Peninsula, Lower Peninsula, and even all down through Suffolk. I've been with Thai Orthopedics now for over 20 years, and this is, in, this is, in my opinion, one of the most innovative improvements in the way we do joint replacement. When I started using the Mako robot in 2020, over 95% of my patients are now down, done outpatient. The reason for that is that the Mako allows me not only to do this more precise, but more proficient in the operating room, where I rarely ever have to recut the bone or recut anything uh, to ensure that the patient gets the best possible prosthetic position for that particular joint. Here's the Mako robot, and you can see that it's got a robotic arm that allows us uh, to move one of the exciting things about Mako Robotics is that you get a CT scan of that joint beforehand. Some people think that's a downside, I think that's only an upside. You get three-dimensional anatomy and you get incredible precision in your preoperative planning like no other device or technique. That kind of precision, no, no other technique can match that. Well, why is that important? Well, when you look at a normal hip, you see a space between the ball and the socket. That's not space, that's cartilage. When people have bone-on-bone -bone arthritis of their hip, the ball is abutting the cup and there's no space. That's what bone-on-bone -bone arthritis is. So when you do a hip replacement, the goal is not to match that and leave the muscles loose because that can lead to instability and the hip dislocating and not staying in its place. You want to basically lengthen that hip back to where their original hip center was and get that length back so the muscles are nice and taut and and firm so that you have a nice stable hip throughout a full arc of motion. The anatomy is so precise that even when we make the cut on the, on the ball portion of the, the hip, we actually can map out this and get it to the precise number that we templated it for. And that's what you see real time. So then when I make my, my, my cut on the bone, we can then measure it to confirm what we were seeing on the screen. And that kind of precision you can't get anywhere else. When I used to do it without the robot, I would do it and kind of guesstimate based on my plain film x-ray of a two-dimensional image, not a three-dimensional image. We now have this three-dimensional image and we, we, we get it much more precisely. That does impact leg length when you make the femoral neck cut. Then what we do is we map out the entire acetabulum and you can see right there all the, all the little dots that we get to map out to confirm with the CT scan what we got preoperatively with what we're seeing real time in the operating room. Then what this allows us to do is bring in the robotic arm and prepare the cup in a way that is so precise that we can get it down to the exact angle and uh, position that we want it. So nothing else can give that kind of accuracy. I can position the implant exactly the way I want it. And I usually, depending on the patient's anatomy, I shoot for 40 degrees of inclination and 20 degrees of inversion, but I can change that based on the patient's CT scan and their anatomy and their functional anatomy real time while I'm operating. But I'm very happy with that position and I'd have that fixed just like that. And in 2010, we got an orthopedic hospital and I tell people now that I uh, have a lot more experience on the peninsula, I now do all my surgeries at the orthopedic hospital at Sentara Careplex. Not that the other hospitals aren't good hospitals and not that they don't do good orthopedic 
orthopedic surgery, they do. But the reason why I do it at the orthopedic hospital is I have an orthopedic team that's dedicated to me to doing these implants. I always tell people I feel like I'm a pretty good quarterback, but if I don't have a great team surrounding me, um, the case does not quite go as smooth as maybe it could if I had a team that works with me day in and day out doing joint replacements on a regular basis. I think that's added to one of the reasons why our complication rate is low. Um, I think the other thing is we've I've added to have a dedicated nurse who's not only in my surgery scheduler but also runs my clinic. Her name's Carla King. She's been an outstanding contribution to the success of this program. And lastly, my PA, Ben Ginsler, who's just really an extension of my practice. If people have trouble getting in to see me for an appointment by calling 757-827-2480, they can get an appointment with Ben. He's truly a full complement and could do everything in the clinic that I can do. The only thing that he can't do is operate on his own. He does help me during the cases and his expertise makes the case go much smoother. Um, and he'll see you post-operatively every other visit. Uh, we follow patients not only for up regularly on a regular basis for one year, but we follow patients every five years after that uh, for a lifetime. The goal is when we do a joint replacement that we want it to last hopefully for the rest of your life. In the laboratory, data right now suggests that these implants that we're putting in now can last for over 30 years. This is a market improvement over 20 years ago when I was doing joint replacements back then. In the lab, they were lasting about 18 to 20 years. Well, now that I've been a physician for 30 plus years, I can tell you 20 years was pretty accurate back then, and we're expecting that the laboratory data today to be equally as accurate. So we're anticipating that if they're putting precisely and accurately, these implants should last more than 30 years. And that's the ultimate goal. One operation for the rest of your life. So one of the things that you know really motivated me was in becoming an orthopedic surgeon was making sure that people live an active, independent lifestyle, particularly in the golden years of their life. Being able to go play with your grandchildren, being able to play pickleball, being able to go play golf, go fishing. I had one gentleman who came in six months after his operation and went back to water skiing for the first time in 20 years. I've had patients go back to downhill skiing and doing everything that they want to do. I just had a patient today who I did his one hip replacement several months ago and his other hip one month ago now back riding his Harley one month out from his surgery with no pain getting on and off his motorcycle. This is the why we do the things that we do, but more importantly, getting people back sooner and faster with less complications and better outcomes.